Hello and welcome to our 10,000 subscriber milestone video. Today, we are going to be showing our super duper ultimate Pikmin collection. Over the past decade, we have built up quite the collection of all things Pikmin. In this video, we will be showing off plushes that we bought, plushes that we made, some official Pikmin merch, like figures, collectible cards, and gummies, and some unofficial merch such as posters, mugs, and a fan-made Pikmin magazine. So sit back and enjoy, and be sure to like and subscribe. Wait, are we actually going to tell people to like and subscribe? It's a bit too late for that now. To the video! Now, because this is our ultimate Pikmin collection, of course we gotta start off with a bang. One decade ago, these two stuffed felts entered our lives and changed it forever. And by that I mean, these were actually our first two Pikmin plushes, and this guy here was my first Pikmin plush. These are the World of Nintendo sets, though this is actually only two of them. Because later on, we got these two. We got this guy somewhat shortly after, and then a while later we bought this guy, because we wanted the full set of these ones. Though, they did also come out with a wing Pikmin, but I don't like how he looks. He looks really funky, and I don't care about getting him. After I got my first World Nintendo plush Pikmin, the craze had started, and I began collecting and collecting and collecting. Of course, my collection consisted mostly of these generic Pikmin, because there weren't really many other officials at the time, but luckily, they were really cheap. Like, these guys were super cheap at the time, so you could get, like, a Pikmin for five bucks, and that's how I ended up with so many. And I started collecting plush Pikmin because Yellow Pikmin got tired of me using his Pikmin for the activities that we were doing. So I ended up getting a 15 Pikmin set that had leaf, bud, flower of each of the Pikmin 2 Pikmin. And that's how I started. Here are all of our uncustomized generic Pikmin in Pikmin 2 order, which totals to 53 Pikmin. That's a lot, and we're still not done. The next set of Pikmin plushes we start collecting are the All-Star set, which of course we were very excited for because, come on, it's new Pikmin merch. Now you may realize these guys actually look a lot different from the generics and the World of Nintendo ones. They're kind of plump and their arms are attached, which I'm not really a fan of the attached arms, and the plumpness is funny and cute, but definitely less realistic. And you may also notice that, wait, these guys aren't being sold. There are no red flowers. And that's because these guys are customized. We switched the tops around so that we can have some new variations of the All-Stars. Though, of course, I feel like we're missing some. We need another set. And of course, one of the best things about the All-Star collection is the Rock Pikmin and the Wing Pikmin. And of course, we had to customize some of them so that they have leaves on them, which we got from some of the generic Pikmin. And then from the generic Pikmin, we put on different tops. And of course, we have a lot of each type, especially the Wing Pikmin, because Wing Pikmin are really cool. And of course, we also got the purples and whites from the All-Star set. Though we did not do any customizing these guys because we already have a lot of whites and purples. They really did not seem necessary. Though I do really like how they look. Another one of the absolute best parts of the All-Star set is these guys, the captains. Olimar and Louie, especially Louie. And while Olimar did change a good bit from his previous design, I believe he's a bit more plump and his eyes changed a bit. Well, Louie looks very similar to the old design, and I really like them both. And of course, we got two sets, because we gotta have two sets. And of course, we couldn't wait to have a real Louie, so we bought a knockoff one. It was just... <laughs> 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 it was 
horrible. <laughs> yeah. That's why we don't even call him Louie. He's Larry. And he also has a hole in the bottom we had to face up. He's also a lot bigger than the actual Louie plush. And he has like an Olimar head. <laughs> so fun to have. And of course Nintendo only made one plush Pikmin enemy. The ball warbs. The ones that we have on the side are the older style ones. And then the one in the middle is in the all-star format. But unfortunately, all these are just knockoffs. We don't have any official ball warp plushes. Remember the customized Wing and Rock Pikmin from earlier? Well, these are the guys who made it possible. Which we ended up replacing their tops with a rock flower. And then we made a custom flower for the yellow. And this guy, which most people know as Dr. Pikmin, he actually came in the mail with his uh, flower being very loose and fell off pretty much right away. So Yellow Pikmin put a orange flower on, and his top actually went on one of our custom Pikmin plushes, which you will see later. And last of the purchased plushes that we customized, is Captain Mark, where I gave him a new outfit, and I mean, these are just pinned on. Nothing uh, special with the glasses. And just a taped on mouth to make him look a little creepy. Captain Mark. And for the finale of the purchase plushes, we have the Plasm Wraith. And the Plasm Wraith. Wait. Yeah, we actually got two of these guys because this one's not holding up too well. We could bought these guys offline so that we would have these awesome Plasma Wraith plushes. And then we got another one because then this one looks good. Yeah, it's a backup. <laughs> this is the backup. Because they are custom made. There's probably only a handful of them in the world. And we were lucky to get them. And they are really cool. Actually, these are really good plushes. And since Nintendo hasn't made a wide variety of Pikmin plushes, we decided to make our own. And the first ones that we did were the pellets, so the Pikmin can collect them. But they're aging a lot and aren't holding up as well. Sometimes we end up making custom plushes specifically for our videos, and this happens to be one of them. We made a candy pop bud for the Pikmin trilogy, and because it's so specific, we really haven't got to use it in many other places, but it's still a pretty cool plush. And of course, we have the onion. We had wanted to make an onion for a long time now because it's such a important part of Pikmin, but it was also a very ambitious plush to make. Though, since we want it for Distant Island, we did end up making it. One of the cool features of this plush is that the legs actually come out so that the onion can fly up in the sky at the end of the day. And the plush that I made is the Pikmin version of the Baldman, not the aggressive one. Mostly he was made because Baldman are cool. And one of the little hidden things that we've had in our older Lost Pikmin series. This is a, a blue sprout. And then it's like a half grown blue Pikmin. So we actually had a little story in Lost Pikmin season four where Dr. Pikmin was cloning the random blue Pikmin that was eaten by the Snagret. So in one of the scenes, Dr. Pikmin actually has the Snaggret head, and in a jar behind him is the Sprout. And then later in the series, you see in the jar that it is a partially grown blue Pikmin. And then eventually, that's how he comes back in Dilly the Ball Borb Show. And we have one more miscellaneous plus to show off here, the Bont Rock, which we do use a lot, but it Probably needs a redesign. And now we're gonna get into some of the Pikmin plush enemies. Here are some of the iconic ones. 
like the sheer grubs. She got a couple swarming kind, we got some female, and of course the male sheer grub. Though we don't usually show them all in one place, we actually have three blow hogs, two fiery and one watery. Though this guy isn't holding up too well, and we decided to use a better material for the other two. Yeah, that fiery blowhog was made with felt. Once they got a little bit larger... <laughs> He's got a hole in him. Yeah, the hole's kind of stretched. <laughs> That's why this guy has been retired. And now it's time for a fan favorite. The bread bug. This guy's a bit funky, but I, I really like him. He does look really nice. And actually, this one of our few plushes that has a legit mouth. And of course, another one, if you watch our videos, you've seen these guys a lot. The uh, snitch bugs. They're starting to show wear and tear, especially because we use pipe cleaners for the arms and the hands. And that's not holding up the best, but we love these guys. Of course, because they're pipe cleaners, that means you can do this. Here is the Joust Mite. This is one that I mostly designed, and it has a lot of cool little details. First, we haven't shown this much. The shell comes off very easily, though normally we keep it on with two pins on the side. And it has a little flap on the bottom that you can't really see because the camera sucks. But normally we would put his little pin tongue thing through it to help guide it. Though, sadly, we actually don't know where it is. Luckily, we needed to make a new one anyways. And one of the more odd creatures that I created was a munged weevil. I'm not even sure why I picked the poisonous version of the dweevil, but uh, that's what I did. He was kind of a pain because of all the legs. Especially because I wanted the legs to be able to move. But he is one of my favorite plushes in the end. He just looks really cool. Now for a few water area creatures. We got the yellow Wallywogs. These are some of my favorite ones. I, in particular, I like the bulging eyes and the orange legs that stick out. And their size is about the size of the ball warbs. So even though they're smaller than what they would be in game, they're a perfect size for plushes. And the other water creature we have is the Toady Bloister, which he has a dow rod for his stem. That's how the bud kind of stays on there. And then to keep him flat, he actually has a piece of cardboard inside of him. I did try to make his mouth be able to open so his, his tongues can come out. Uh, but that didn't work very well, so yeah, he's uh, tight-lipped. And now it is time for a very, very special plush that, as of making this video, has not been featured anywhere else. Dun dun dun! The Puffy Blowhog! Yeah, so this is the latest one that I worked on. It's taken about three months. Uh, Yellow Pikmin did the eyes, which are really cool. They're actually, they puff out. Um, he got the dots, the fin, and his snout. And he has all 12 of the, they're called thorns in the game. Very detailed. He is very large. Yes, he, Wait, is, <laughs> he is huge, actually. Are you ready for a Pikmin for scale? Here he is. Just yes. look at the size difference. I mean, this Pikmin is like the size of his fin. Yeah, he's actually about two and a half feet long and a foot and a half tall. And I think he weighs probably about five pounds. He's, he's our heaviest plush. Kind of ironic because he's meant to be light. And a yes. <laughs> but yeah, it took a lot of work, but he is possibly my favorite plush right now. The payoff was worth it. He is awesome. And we will be sure to feature him soon. And now we get to our first boss. 
which is the puff stool. He's another one that took a little while to make. I think he's probably took about like six months working on and off. Uh, he's kind of a, a basic design, but the hardest part was his top. It's getting that shape. Uh, I also use cardboard inside to help shape him. Yeah, you can't see it too well. It's there. Yeah, sure and then there's there. some thick uh, pipe cleaners in his uh, eye stalk. Which also means... <laughs> and of course, you can't have a puff stool without a puffman. Nothing uh, too special about the puffman. He's just like Pikmin shape. He does have cardboard, and he's depressed as ever. Yeah, because they're always depressed. And the next boss is the Water Wraith. This one, the Water Wraith himself, is a pretty basic design except for the wheels. The wheels do actually turn. Ooh, turning, whoa, motion. <laughs> <laughs> and he is mostly uh, lifelike size. And the wheels are held on by Tinker Toys, actually. Yes, this is a Tinker Toy. You can't tell because it's painted gray, but we have Tinker Toy bits, and this is also a Tinker Toy piece. We use that to make sure that he can move, and of course we have a little hole in the roller so that the Tinker Toy can fit through. And the rollers do actually come off. Yes, which we'll show. And here is the Water Wraith in all his pathetic glory, without his rollers, and we also have a pigment for scale. The Water Wraith has these little hooks at the end of his limbs to make sure he can stay on the rollers, if that wasn't obvious enough. And the rollers are just coffee cans. We were very creative when making these Tinker Toys and coffee cans. Quite an unsuspected duo. And of course we have our iconic burrowing Snaggerit. And an extra head that we have yet to decide what its purpose will be. It's pretty much an identical copy of this one. And it's, it's basically just an extra head. We literally don't have any other use for it, but it's funny to have an extra head. Yeah, it was originally used for the spider snagger it. And then once that was destroyed, uh, no use. And to add to our snagger collection, we have another first time appearance on the Yellow Pikmin channel. The snagger it chicks. As I'm making this video, there is only two Pikmin 4 trailers. And these guys were in the second one, and we saw them, and we were like, you know what? Those need to be a plush. And now we have even more Snaggerets. And yes. these guys are just really cool. Yeah, we did take care to add details of the light blue stripe. They got the toenails. And the Snaggeret type eyes. They're just really cool. And we have two of them. Yeah, well, out of all the things in Pikmin 4 trailer. The baby snaggers are just the best. <laughs> they are really cool. We have two other things that are Pikmin related, but are not really plush. We have Captain Mark's ship, which is made out of coffee cans and cardboard and just random plastic things. It's like a Hockitation styled ship. And our other non-plush Pikmin creation is big ol' Shaggy. He's actually a kind of old plush. We've had him for quite a while, and he's been through a lot. His legs are made of wooden dowel rods, and he's held together by screws. And the bottoms of his feet are actually just halved styrofoam balls that are painted black and he's starting to show some age too and the yarn that is making him look hairy is actually not attached <laughs> and underneath he's just a miserable black ball yeah it's kind of like a baldy <laughs> but it's not even quite a baldy because they don't have the colors yeah but he was not really meant to be presented like this But yeah, he is really cool. He's big. 
a little more fragile than I'd like. Like, if I would make him again, I'd probably do a different design, but... I love him. And now we are moving on to our original characters. And we are starting with our oldest OC, which is, of course, the Phantom Pikmin, who was made for the Lost Pikmin series. And because he was the main antagonist, we gave him a very stereotypical, basic, kind of villainous design, being black. He has the very cartoony, evil eyes. And instead of the normal petals, he has four thorn-looking petals. Of course, he's uh, really old. And he's not holding up too well by now. He's got like no stuffing in this arm and his head wobbles around a lot. So sadly he's not doing too well nowadays. We also have these four and these are some of the earlier OCs and uh, these were made at the time that I wasn't incredibly skilled in making plushes because these were all mine. So they're not doing too well right now and they didn't really look incredible from the beginning, definitely not to the quality standards of our newer ones, but they are still pretty cool. We have the two green Pikmin, the Nectar Pikmin, and uh, whatever this guy is. We don't have a name for him. And also they're not faring too well either. This guy was especially unfortunate due to his fabric. He's got like holes all over him, but we haven't bothered to fix him. This guy also has his uh, eyeball blood thing falling off. And I think this guy's missing a pedal. Yeah, he's, he's missing a pedal. And the wings on this guy are also kind of falling off. Which kind of makes sense. Since they're old and we are pretty hard on them. And now we are moving into the dimension of the Wraith. Where we start off with the biggest baddie yet for the Lost Pikmin Season 4. And pretty much all of Lost Pikmin as a whole. Not including Second World, of course. But because he was the biggest baddie yet, and being from the other dimension, we decided we needed to go all out with his design. So we made him look very special. We gave him four arms with big fingers. He's got two different colored eyes. He, of course, has the Phantom Pikmin flower and a generic Pikmin flower. And then we also decided to go find some special fabric for him because we didn't think that a generic fabric would be enough. So this fabric has a lot of shades of gray, and you can see it really well on his back. And it's also got some sparkles on it. So he definitely looks very unique. And we continued the trend of the special fabrics for our other Pikmin from the Dimension of the Ray. So these guys are kind of more generic, but they are meant to kind of fill out the uh, roster of Pikmin in the other dimension. So this guy, he's got the long arms. He's the Ivy Wraith. This one is the Emerald Wraith. He's got a bunch of different colors on him. And that is Solar Flare. Yeah, so he has like a sun pattern, kind of like a burning fire. And then his flower is like a sun. And for most of these, uh, Yellow Pikmin came up with the design. Or actually, I think some of your friends came up yeah, with it. Yeah, it was a combined those. effort. Combined effort. And then I worked on Mostly the, the pattern and just helping more with the construction of the plushies. Oh, and one other funny thing in this guy, because it doesn't stand out too much, his finger hand things are actually two different colors because we had to change it because on this side of the fabric is very red, well, on this side of the fabric is very orange. So I thought that was funny. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right how much, here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much it blends in. <laughs> And now for my favorite of the Second World plushes, uh, this is the Portal Wraith. He's the largest of the custom plushes that we have made. Well, the custom OCs anyway. And um, yeah, we used a toilet paper roll in the <laughs> hole, which you can actually see all the way through, I think. If you get it on the camera, right? If I get it on the camera, there, right? There, now you can see it. <laughs> and this guy, I made most of his design because I wanted to keep in mind that he was meant to look a lot like a wraith. So I went off the designs of the plasma wraith and the water wraith. His feet leg things are a lot like the plasma wraith and kind of like the water wraith. 
And in general, he has a very plump body and very rounded because the other two rays have a very similar design to that. Also pansy for scale. Yeah, and he is one of my favorites, I think, because he is more like something that you'd see in a Pikmin game. Which is what I intended to go for. And now for something completely wild, different, and never seen before. Drum roll, please. This is... Memento Mori. This is a character that was created by me and a friend. His name, Memento Mori, means a reminder of death or death is inevitable. And he is a maniacal, powerful character. And his very chaotic, asymmetrical design kind of reflects his insanity. And though he is kind of his own character right now, it has his own story. We don't plan to include that in any of our videos. And I really like the design because he has so many different colors. And with the asymmetrical design, it does bring a lot of chaos and uneasiness to his look. And I don't know, out of the Pikmin type OCs that we made, I think he's probably the best made one. And just all the bright colors just make him look really, really neat. And we're not just plush fans, we also collect many other types of Pikmin merchandise. Uh, right here is a small sampling in which we will be going through all of our items. So some of the common merch that we have is the Smash Pikmin Amiibo, which is pretty cool. And we got the Hey Pikmin Amiibo, which I think looks much better. It has the Rock Pikmin and Wing Pikmin in. And, believe it or not, the only physical release that we have of a North American Pikmin game is Hey Pikmin. The other ones we have the digital versions of. And related to the 3DS, we also have the AR cards that come with that, including the uh, Pikmin one, which basically, on the 3DS, it lets you see a, like a 3D model of the Pikmin through the 3DS. Pretty neat, but very common. And through the My Nintendo Rewards, we got the Pikmin 3 Deluxe stickers. We've not even taken them off the sheet. And in the direct that Pikmin 4 was announced in, I saw Miyamoto wearing the shirt, and as soon as I knew I could buy the shirt, I went to get it. We can't really show it off too well, but the main design is the pea in the middle with the Pikmin and the flower. In the last few years, Jax Pacific has made a few of the uh, plastic Pikmin figures, which we started collecting a bunch of these. And then later they did have a larger set, but these are very detailed. As you can see, like the paint on them is really good. They're similar to the old Pikmin 2 plastic figures that they made. Um, these are definitely better, but the old Pikmin 2 figures, they actually had like ball warbs and onions and... Yes, and one, one of these days I'm going to have some of them. They're just, just the last thing I do. Ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Well, they have so many cool creatures. Also, if you're wondering... We have an extra Olimar because we bought a few of these guys before we got the massive set, so we got an extra. And we also have another set that's unopened. Which of course is labeled as Pikmin 3 Deluxe, but it has <laughs> Olimar and purple Pikmin, which aren't even in the main store. <laughs> There's not even white Pikmin. That would make more sense for Pikmin 2, but no, this is Pikmin 3 Deluxe. And then they don't even include Wing and Rock. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but the figures are cool anyway. Yeah, it seems like they were just doing a bit of uh, sneaky marketing. Get more Pokos. <laughs> <laughs> and the last of the Pikmin merch that we have that was actually sold in the United States is... The Pikmin 3 Deluxe Thousand Piece Puzzle. And this was made by USAopoly, and you can get it for less than 20 bucks. So 
So this is the first of our imported merch from Japan. These are just little notepads with Pikmin 3 on them. And here is the inside. They're nothing too special. But they're a couple dollars and they're easy to add on to an order of our other merch that we're actually buying. And the Pikmin gummies were the main thing that we were buying at the time. If you bought them in bulk, they were not too expensive to have them imported. And they have a couple different flavors. Um, the white ones being the most delicious because they have like a lemon. <laughs> they have a lemon flavor. Lemon yeah. strawberry. And I must say, I, I really love these. These are some of my favorite candies now. Yeah, they're not as sweet as like the gummies and stuff in the United States, but they are pretty good. And of course we bought a lot of them. There's a few unopened packs, but we ate most of them. And they were delicious. Another Japanese exclusive is this Japanese Pikmin 2 for the GameCube. And this one, this one is really cool. Of course, sadly, because this is Japanese, we have no way to play it. We were very fortunate with this one. We got it off of eBay for like $18, and it literally had everything complete in box, including the Pikmin cards, which we will show off later. One day I hope to play this game, even though it's going to cost us a whole Japanese GameCube to actually run it. Well, it seems later came pretty quickly. These are the cards that came with the Japanese Pikmin too. And specifically, these are called Pikmin Puzzle Cards in Japan and they open up mini games on a Game Boy Advance if you have the e-reader plus along with Pikmin 2 and the GameCube and a bunch of other stuff and it came with a small manual which shows you how to hook it up and advertises the other packs that you can get which has all the enemies in card form when opened up this gives you the directions on how to hook up the Game Boy Advance and everything to play the game. As you can see, there's lots of instructions for that that we can't read. And then on the back, it gives you a little more details about the cards that you can purchase. And then details on how to actually play the game. So this one is the Plucking Pikmin game. This one is the Marching Pikmin game. And this one is the Connecting Pikmin game. And if you want to actually see the games in action, go to my channel. I have a few videos of playing some of the uh, puzzle games. And we will link it in the description. So most of the cards come in these packs. Um, there's three different colors, blue, red, and yellow. They have five cards each, and there's four sets for each color. So it's not like Pokemon cards where you get something random. Like every blue four pack has the same set of cards. Um, so that gives a total of 60 like standard cards, and most of them are the Pikmin enemies. Here's some examples of some of the cards that you can get from the packs. They each have an enemy, or... In some cases, a Pikmin. At the top, they have their name. And this big block of text, from what we can tell using Google Lens, which is not a lot, by the way, it seems like they're kind of similar to the Piclopedia entries. These three numbers say which games they play. They play one of each of the types. And this long string of nonsense is actually what the game reads to have you play them. Yeah, that's actually the data for the games themselves. We have a total of 55 of the cards. 52 are the standard ones that come in the pack, and then three are the promotional ones that came with Pikmin 2. We do hope to get the, as much of the entire set as we can. There's a total of 72 cards, but we can probably only complete the enemy set. Since there are 60 standard cards, but the others are promotional and they're a lot harder to come by. But we do have a lot. And now for the final section, the unofficial Pikmin merchandise. 
First thing is a poster that we bought off of Redbubble by an artist named Mal. It's like a sleeping ball orb in front of a gate. If you thought we were done with the massive posters, then think again, because we have another one. Though this poster is in this section because we think it's actually not official. It says Pikmin, not Pikmin 3 or Pikmin 3 Deluxe, and it also has no trademark or anything. Because my family knows I'm obsessed with Pikmin, one year I was given this Pikmin coloring book, and I'll show off a few pages. I haven't colored a whole lot of it. Oh, here's one that I colored, but most of it is untouched. And to spread the joy of Pikmin to everybody, both Yellow Pikmin and I have some Pikmin t-shirts. Of course, you know, this is mine, Wolfie 7, and that one is Yellow Pikmin, and then he also has a white Pikmin one as well. But I wasn't done there. I needed even more Pikmin shirts for my collection. So I got this Hockey Tape design and Pikmin around a campfire. Of course, these are not official, so they do sometimes have some inaccuracies like they spelled Hockey Tape wrong and the white Pikmin have white petals. It's a disgrace. Not only do we wear Pikmin, we also eat, sleep, and drink Pikmin. Kind of. I got these two custom designed mugs. This one has a very silly shot of Louie. And this one is one I got specifically for Wolf B7 with designs of some of his hacked levels and some of the other things related to that. And that is my favorite mug. I drink out of it almost every single day. Success. And completely random and not purchased, these are some of the clay figures made by Yellow Pikmin that I wanted to show off because they are really cool. Especially the Meyer Tops. That's definitely my favorite. He be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> he be hungry though. That ball warb is getting his back straightened out. Yes, he's getting a water rate massage. Though. They are actually attached. Yeah, they really didn't fit anywhere else in this video, but they were so cool that I thought they had to be shown off. And now to end this very Pikmin-y marathon of merchandise, we have Topical Wilds. This is a fan magazine that's all about Pikmin, and there are a whole bunch of creators involved, and it's really cool. So we had to show it off. And it also was transported by Hakate Freight, this came on the box that the Topical Wilds came in, so we decided to keep it. And along with Topical Wilds, it came with some postcards that were related to the book. And we will give a sneak peek at the book, but we're not going to show everything. We'll show off a few pages, though. This is a... Um, comic strip. Comic strip, yeah. I, I can think. Uh, these are, I believe, the lost data files. And they have like this weird text all over them, which by the way is actually readable. It is just the English swap out kind of cipher thing, which the decoder is in this book. You'll have to find it though. We have Louis' meals. There's a whole bunch of meals that Louis has prepared. There are some designs, and this is probably my favorite. They have this little spot at game, so you have to find different treasures that are in the book. Oh, and there's another comic strip. And finally, here are all the creators that were involved in the book. I think it makes sense to show them off. Because this whole thing is really cool. Definitely one of the best fan magazines I've ever seen. Yes, very high quality. Would recommend. Definitely. Obviously, thank you so much for all the support and for watching to the end of the video. And if you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe. Shut up.